Hello friends, uh, welcome to another session from NCRT Biology Class 11 from Chapter 1 and we are talking about track taxonomical aids in this particular video. Now, uh, you know taxonomy, we have already talked about taxonomy and taxonomy deals with uh, identifying an organism, naming that organism and putting it into uh, the classification, I mean putting it into different groups so that we can easily study them based on our purposes. So, and also uh, there is another brother of taxonomy that is called systematics which deals with uh, the relationship between the different individuals or relationship between different organisms uh, that are placed in different taxon. Okay. So, uh, there are certain taxonomical aids that means the tools that we used to, uh, used to apply to preserve the taxonomical features and this aid can be divided actually into two parts. One is you know the dead Part, another one is a living. So, we have two types of taxonomical aids. Now, dead part and living part, both these things actually uh, the idea is to preserve the taxonomical features, to preserve, preserve the taxonomical features. That is the thing. We need to preserve the taxonomical features, right? So, between the dead and living, right? Now, here for the dead part, we used to preserve the organism in two different ways. One is, you know, herbarium for plant and animal, both this case actually. Uh, so, for plant and uh, animals, so let me write for plants and for animals, we can actually preserve them after their death, right? And for the living organism, we we are preserving them again, plants and animals, we are preserving them while they are living, right? And why this preservation? Because we want, we want audience, we want people to be educated, to be educated and to understand, to identify the organism by looking at it, right? So, if you look at a cat, you can easily say this is a cat. If you look at tiger, you, you probably have seen tiger uh, in your life uh, going into zoo. Actually, we can go to them, we can see them, we, can, we cannot feel them always, but uh, we can see them. And we can identify them, we can know how they work, how they walk, how they act. You know, a tiger roars all the time, very crazy people. So, you can look all these things, right? So, this interaction is very, very important to educate us, to identify things and know what is going on, right? Now, to preserve the dead things like plants and animals, you know, to preserve the dead plants, there is a process called herbarium. It's called? So, it's called, sorry, it's H-E-R-B-A-R-I-U-M, herbarium. So, produce herbarium, right? Herbarium is nothing but uh, preservation of dead plants in a dry, so by drying the plant and then placing them into sheets and pressing them. So, we take a plant. We press it and dry it over time, then you put it into a sheet, you know. Once you press the plant and dry it, it becomes a sheet-like structure, just like an image, just like a kind of fossil. So, you take it, we place it into a, you know, sheet. So let's say here, we place it into sheets and that's, that's what we talk about herbarium. So, you prepare many sheet of uh, this many sheet of plants, you know, herbarium sheets, they are termed as the herbarium sheets, okay. okay. So, uh, that's, that's how the herbarium sheet is produced. That means you have something like that. So, let's, let's draw it. 
let's draw it for our convenience so let's say this is it and here comes a tree and we actually place that tree like that we press it hard so the tree the part of the tree actually to prepare a better herbarium it's required to take whole uh, set of the tree that means it should get some some part of the roots some some part of the shoot region you know uh, then you, you should have uh, uh, leaves and all these things because to identify a plant you need to look for root shoot I mean uh, leaves and all these different regions fruits and flowers if it's there and if it is a big tree huge tree in that case you need to take you know small uh, smaller version of the tree that means the siblings that's the ideal uh, for that or otherwise uh, you can take uh, the part of the tree and you take leaf you take some part of the root some part of the flower uh, fruits and all these things to finally make this herbarium work so that's herbarium to preserve dead plants obviously the plant will be dead here and it will contain zero water because as you dry it completely then second thing is uh, preservation of animals preservation of animals it can also be done uh, using what is called as museum so it's called as museum sorry sorry for the mistake here it's museums okay so we can produce museum museum can contain both a plant as well as animal species but more importantly animals because you know if these are the dead animals you should need uh, you need uh, different permissions because if you need to store organ of human being or any part related to human you should get permission to do all these things you can do herbarium on your own if you want it's, it can be collectible it can be a hobby of some people and that's a great hobby to actually possess but for for the animals to preserve it, it take much more difficulty and much more complicated system that means you require jar that are called as vials and inside the vial you have all those organism in let's say inside that vial we we should put let's say let's put starfish starfish so that's how we can preserve animals right and in that vial we have liquid solution you know we have a completely dead starfish there and we have a liquid solution and in the liquid solution it is usually consisting of preservatives preservatives okay so that uh, the tissue for that uh, particular animal uh, it might be tanned it might be very stiff over time but it won't get rotten so we need to prevent the infecting agents like bacteria virus because they can do dangerous things like so we need to add preservatives like example of such preservative is formaldehyde formaldehyde or simply termed as formalin here formalin is termed as you know it's used as a preservative to preserve all those uh, died animals or dead animals okay uh, and we can put all these jars into the museum and uh, we can showcase it and doing all these things okay and uh, for the living thing to preserve living organisms it's uh, it's much more complicated obviously because dead things won't I mean won't move won't do all this stuff but for uh, preserving living things you need to supply food energy because they need to grow and uh, they need to have unaltered uh, processes of their life so it's complicated in further degree so the living organisms like plants and animals can be preserved directly and for example both of them can be preserved you know for any for plants they can be preserved in botanical garden botanical garden and one such example of the botanical garden is uh, national botanical garden of India that is uh, that is uh, pre present in Howrah situated in Howrah which is very close proximity to where I live in and uh, actually it is placed in Shippur Howrah so botanical gardens are brilliant uh, reservoir of plants because living plants and nothing uh, is comparable with the living uh, you know museum so these are the living museum of plants you know filled with plants they're growing you know you can see them growing you can see their leaf their fruit their 
you know root shoot every part of those plants and this is brilliant and in Hara botanical garden is one of the biggest botanical gardens in India and on the other hand for animals to preserve we can go for you know simply we can go for zoological garden zoological garden and simply termed as the zoo more commonly termed as the zoo right so you can see zoos are very common in different part of india you will find a zoo i mean in different cities there is a zoo somewhere so that the city people can interact with the animal they know what the animal do and they start to find what what are the different properties of them interacting with the children and it's a very good time to hang out in the zoos i personally recommend i personally love to go into the zoo in the winter times in india and uh, so these are uh, the how we can actually preserve uh, the taxons or different group of uh, taxonomical hierarchy it might not contain all of them because you know, it's not possible in a zoo you might not find kangaroo uh, very kangaroo is kind of uncommon here but still some zoos kept them in a zoo you, you may not find you know dolphin right in indian zoos uh, in all Indian zoos actually because uh, this is not kind of good because once you're putting living animals and placing them you need to think about certain things like whether the animal can breed there whether the animal can stay there whether the animal can live there the environment whether it is suitable for the animals or not so that's why you, you won't find any penguins in our zoos actually so these are the things that we need to maintain right so so again but still it contains certain local animals but still we won't see those animals uh, you know wandering around our uh, colony or something so that's why uh, zoo going to zoo and botanical garden is important to understand the the tiny amount of the huge biodiversity that is present uh, throughout the world uh, in the living organisms so that's it guys and i hope that's helpful thank you